Hello, good evening, champion parents, and welcome to our platform, Mommy Talk, where we discuss topics that are real, relatable, and right on time. Come talk to us, Dr. Pert, Miss Lisa, and Miss April, this evening at 313-837-1340. Today, we are chatting with Orlando Bogans. Woo! Woo educator, father, principal. He has a lot of experience when it comes to dealing um, with issues with children, not only his own child, but also other people's uh, children because he's been in the field of education for over 20 years. Um, so today um, he will discuss how to help children build and maintain positive and healthy relationships. Yes, yes. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that exposing your children to different people and various activities eliminate or minimize feelings of inferiority? Yes. I am so glad I pronounced that word correctly. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Shout out, Dr. Perth. Yes, because I, I, thought I, I thought I was about to have a moment where I didn't say that word correctly, but I did. Because, you know, sometimes I mispronounce uh, my words and I make no apology about it. That's but, right, unapologetically you know. oh, incorrect. So, Mr. Bogans, what's up? Say hello to our listeners. Hello, listeners. What's going on with everyone? Hey, hey. That's hey. what's up. So, you want to give us a little bit of background about yourself? Sure, sure. No problem at all. I am a proud product of Detroit Public Schools. Uh, and let me back up for a second. I am uh, raised by my mother. My parents divorced when I was in the third grade, but my dad was still in my life consistently. So I don't have an issue there at all, but I am the product of my mother raising me uh, third grade. And uh, she was my primary parent. And so from that, just matriculated through Detroit Public Schools, graduated from Cass Technical High School, uh, went on to Clark Atlanta University, came home. Uh, did some things at Wayne State University and then got my master's, started teaching. Okay. Uh, graduated from CAS, <laughs> went back to CAS, started teaching there, and then just kind of prospered here and there. And now I can say I'm the proud, proud, proud principal of Go Lightly Education Woo! Center. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So that's awesome. a little bit about me. Nice. That's a nice um, resume. Yes, so how? So let me ask you this, because I heard you say that you graduated from CAS, but then yet you went back there to work. Absolutely. In what capacity? So I was honored to really go back there and do my student teaching mm. under my former English teacher, Mrs. Phillips. Okay. And so wow. then after that, uh, I finished in June and was working there right after. And then I did one year at Cass Technical High School and then went over to Detroit High School for Final Performing Arts. So I was a teacher first to answer your question. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to some other schools and I returned as a teacher uh, and then climbed the ladder, instructional specialist, assistant principal, and now principal. Mm. So do you enjoy being a principal? I love it. Mm. I love it. It mm -hmm. is the best career choice I've made in such a long time. It's very rewarding. Um, we all know that in this world that education does not receive the best salary ever. I uh, but I will say, when you see a change that has been made inside of a child's mind and inside of a child's heart due to what you have imported to them, mm -hmm. uh, what you've delivered into them, it makes a difference. So when I see the smile, when I see the happiness, when I see uh, them achieving academically, that's the salary that makes a difference for me. Absolutely. Tell the truth. People need to hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I would like an extra couple thousand. Now. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, that know, wouldn't hurt. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm just saying. But... Sometimes um, I have to stop and recognize that in undergrad, no one put a gun to my head and made me go into education. Mm -hmm. And so I really remember how someone poured into me during my high school career, and that's why I wanted to go back into high school. But since then, uh, being selected to go over to Go Lightly and be the principal there, I always had reservations about working with K-8 students because I just... Mm -hmm. Didn't think I had enough patience. Mm -hmm. But being there these now three years, I wouldn't tra trade it for the world. Mm -hmm. And it taught nice. you something about yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, and I wanted to add, because I hear you say you graduated from CAS, you returned back to CAS, mm -hmm. and in order to um, have done that, uh, which is our topic today, you had to... Uh, in some way build some uh, positive relationships uh, mm -hmm. in, able to, in order to walk back through those doors. So my question I want to ask, um, what does a healthy, what does healthy positive relationships look like? You know, that's a heavy question because it pours into relationships at school, relationships at work, relationships at home, and, uh, you know, just really 
making sure everyone is accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, a healthy, positive relationship, it could be really, really meaningful when you have trust, mm -hmm. uh, when you have ownership of doing right and wrong. A lot of people don't know how to accept when they are right or when they're wrong. And so you got to stop there and, and say, what was I responsible for to maintain this positive relationship? You then got to stop and say, what can I do to make it better? Uh, you shouldn't always be the brunt of the relationship to make someone be uh, able to reciprocate it to you. However, it still makes a difference when you are 50-50. Every relationship is give and take 50-50. So I would say some trust, uh, accepting responsibility, reciprocity, and sometimes that, that brutal honesty helps. Mm -hmm. And just as well as you can give it, you got to be able to take it. Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned um, accepting responsibility because if I know the listeners doesn't know, me and Mr. Bogus know that he was actually my son's assistant principal over when he was at CAS. <laughs> and um, Seth, I don't know, he may be listening or not. I remember he, he got in some little trouble, you know, trying to go into the gym. Little but trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and he helped him accept responsibility and take ownership of his, you know, his wrongdoings. And it really helped Seth to understand what it is to be a man mm -hmm. and how to accept responsibility because we all do things that we're not supposed to do. That's mm -hmm. right. But I appreciate um, Mr. Bogans for, you know, just talking with him and allow mm -hmm. him to see his wrongdoing and for Seth to actually um, accept his responsibility and grow from that situation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, your sons are wonderful. Young men. Both of them, uh -huh. wonderful young men. And, you know, as an administrator, even a teacher, when I was a teacher, you always or I always tried to make sure it was a teachable moment mm -hmm. so they don't walk away with just me fussing at them, but they mm -hmm. learn a lesson and how and what they should have done different so they wouldn't be in that predicament. Right, and that's and, very important. And I think that's really important because I think that children respect you more when you listen to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you listen to them and then, like you say, when you tell them, look, this is where you went wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important for us to be able to tell our children where they went wrong so they won't continue to make the same mistakes. Because right. at the end of the day, they're the individuals that's going to uh, take the torch when we're leave when we're older. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Yeah, and then it's also a way you communicate that. Sometimes you know we want to fuss and, mm -hmm. and yell, and that's fine too. But we need to make sure we do it lovingly, mm -hmm. so they'll be able to receive it. Mm -hmm. So whose responsibility is it to uh, give uh, students or children those skills to be able to uh, maintain positive relationships? I would say it's a part of the village. Responsibility. Uh, it takes everyone to make sure that we are on the same page, uh, ensuring that we're depositing some very uh, teachable moments, lessons learned, uh, strategies of what they can do to make better decisions, uh, help them with life lessons, whether it's someone from the social media aspect and the world aspect, uh, personal aspects, just those experiences that can help someone to grow. Um, as a product from Cast Tech, there was one staff member there who taught me something when I first became an administrator and she told me as long as you keep as long as you treat kids like adults and treat adults like kids you'll be successful and I remember that no matter what no matter what I'm doing or who I'm working with when you are able to talk to a child in a mature way to help them understand some things that can receive what you're saying I think that that makes a difference there because then they can receive and know that they're being challenged and they want to do more and be more because they also see that this person who's talking to me has a higher expectation for me. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of given an indirect subliminal message there. Mm -hmm. And so once that continues on, no matter what, you know, the child will eventually grow into being a bigger, better, mature individual. And now I will say it's unfortunate. We live in a day and age that uh, the concern, the values, uh, things of that nature that we do inside of a school building, mm -hmm. those eight hours, don't always match what's done at home. And so educators, we have that battle sometimes mm -hmm. trying to uh, re re retain and obtain some of those values we teach every day to remain there every day. And it's mm -hmm. difficult at times because at home, some of the parents don't match what we have. And so it becomes a battle, but we just know that as we continue to love in between the school hours, that is mm -hmm. the impact that we want to make. And if you realize a lot of people who are successful they will say it's this one teacher here and there because no matter what anyone does, somebody came from a classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to ask for that statement again. What is it again? <laughs> you treat children like adults and you say treat, what? Yep. You treat children like adults 
and treat adults like children. Okay, so I need a little clarity on the treat adults like children. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never to insult anybody. Okay. But sometimes some adults that we work with, you got to hold their hand and you got to walk them through oh, some okay. things, some expectations. Amen. Because, okay. Uh, and I, I don't think this insulting them based upon their education they experience but because we are overwhelmed with so much, so much. Okay. we wear so many hats so if i need to do something give me the bullet points okay. break it down for me don't give me a whole lot of jargon of okay. what you need me to do just bullet point it for me and it makes it easier for me because if you give me the high level three points I got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you go down or breaking down to what this strategy is, this percentage of this from last year compared to this year, and you're looking at who did, I, mm, okay, it becomes a little bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. and so, so it's more of a supported, uh, supportive statement when you say treat adults like children, the holding the hand and or the um, just basically reiterating um, some things. So yes. okay, I got it. Yep. You know yep. we couldn't let that slide. No, I'm good. <laughs> Come on, let's get it. I love this. So I, I have it. a question uh -huh. because I once heard somebody say. Don't treat these children like they are your own children. But for for me, when I look at children, I would tr I try to treat treat children how I would want somebody to treat my child. Mm -hmm. So can you expound on that? What are, what are your thoughts about that? So I think it depends on each household. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you because when I go into a school, I am treating the kids like I would want somebody to treat mine. Mm -hmm. However, how I was raised. And what my parents instilled in me may be completely different than my coworker down the hall. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people don't have the compassion. Sometimes people don't have the patience. Sometimes people don't have the time where they want to really invest in a student or someone mm -hmm. to say, hey, you did it wrong, but let's consider it like this the next time. You know, and not make it as, um, not Lisa Dang. Um, Miss April. Miss April. It's on top of my head. I apologize. It's okay. Miss April was saying it's not just what you say, but it's how you say, say it. it. Yeah. Definitely. And then you want it to be where it is approachable. They can return to you mm -hmm. because you just never know by you sitting there listening that one time and how that that moment mm -hmm. that you sacrificed and gave to the kid made a difference. It does. Prime example, mm -hmm. uh, my assistant principal, I give her love all the time, Kelly Patterson, uh, she has a student that she was talking to, mm -hmm. and it was a female student, an eighth grader, and the student was having some, I would say, self-motivation issues, okay. if you will. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Patterson just gave her some compliments. And she said, wow, you really think that about me? And so she was not sure of how to receive that from Mrs. Patterson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since, she, since Mrs. Patterson said that about her, she has come and talked with Mrs. Patterson every day. Mm -hmm. So that five-minute conversation from a grown woman to a young woman trying to really matriculate in life, period, made mm -hmm. a difference in the impact. And so we told the parent about it. The parent was very receptive to it. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want you all to continue to work with my daughter. So it's a part of that village as well. It is. It is. Well, you, shout out to Miss Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, she used to be my teacher at Cass. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it is important, you know, we always have those students who come back, like, well, you said this and this, this and that. I don't, I don't even remember saying that, but right. it resonates with them and yes, they appreciate those moments. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So what resilience. type of activities can help children build necessary skills? Say it again. I feel like you <laughs> want to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> what type of activities can help children build necessary skills? The type of activities. I think one time you got to just stop and have a conversation with the child and figure out what that oomph is, mm -hmm. what hits that spark, mm -hmm. what is it that makes them click. And from my experiences, I would always recommend the three A's. This is something that we did at Cast Tech. Well, we would look at athletics, mm -hmm. whether it's whatever kind of sport, and it may be the non traditional, whether it's lacrosse, whether it is. Uh, wrestling, anything like that that is not the norm for our children to want to pursue, but anything in athletics. So starting them young, getting them introduced to that kind of thing can make a difference. Um, and then the arts. Are they playing the piano? Are they dancing? What kind of dancing are they doing? Are they doing hip-hop, tap dancing, ballet, modern? Uh, are they playing an instrument? Things like that, as well as academics. You know, if you have a child that you know is prospering, uh, excelling more than the norm, then you need to continue to challenge that so that they will definitely be 
impactful to you. So again, I think activities that are centered around the three A's, athletics, academics, and arts, that will make a difference with them and give them some challenges. And then as they move forward and take it serious, then they'll continue to grow and they want to be a leader within that. And you can ask anybody that's in there, kind of started young and how somebody had to help them train and get there and move forward and forward and be dedicated. Everybody that's in one of those fields that's successful had to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. So you're a father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many children do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so I have one, but I want to be clear just so everybody can know what's <laughs> happening. I don't want to get my phone blown up tonight. My windows, <laughs> <laughs> my windows uh, <laughs> busted out my cars and everything like that. So my one that I do have is not biologically mine, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm proud to say that it is my nephew. Okay. And I have no problem saying that he is, he is, he is. Um, the love that I I felt like I didn't have ever. We're really, really close. And so uh, he does have a father in his life, his biological father. But because of our relationship, we are extremely, extremely close. Mm-hmm. And how old yeah. is he? 22. Okay, cool. Yeah, he's 22. Cool. That's awesome. So yeah. what advice would you give, you know, parents out there, especially, you know, you are a working uh, individual what advice would you give the working parent um, that is trying to establish a relationship with their child? I would say a couple of things for the working parent to establish a relationship. One, you have to create a balance. In education, it is so common that educator, edu- educator children are some of the worst ones. Mm-hmm. Because educators are trying so hard to devote it all to their students. Yes, <laughs> tell me about it. Oh and my God. The kids at home become a deficit and they are mm-hmm. without. And so you have to create a balance. And how do you create that balance? It's with communication, mm-hmm. uh, with technology today, sending text messages throughout the day, letting them know something. Uh, I know that we're not supposed to take children in high school and you know, throughout K <laughs> 12. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But. Every now and then, you just don't know mm-hmm. uh, what that text could say or mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh, leaving notes here and there in a drawer uh, when they wake up to go to the bathroom in the morning mm-hmm. or in their backpack, something to let them know that you care and how you want to do some things. Uh, I think a lot of times we're not really prone to communicate effectively, and everyone is different. And so I think communication with that balance makes a difference. And then spending that quality time. Yes, that's you important. To. You have to make that time for your children. Absolutely. Yes. So I want to add something. You know, you said something about the village. And, you know, I, I talk about that all the time. And uh, with me coming from a family where it was just um, in my house, it was just my my mother and my brother, um, I feel like sometimes I have to create my own village, you know, because we don't have a lot of, I have a big family, but as far as like the closeness of the family, I feel like sometimes I have to create that village for my uh, children. So um, as far as your your son, your nephew, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, you are part, part of his uh, village. Um, so what is my question? <laughs> <laughs> So how how important do you think that? And I know you said something about the village um, again, but I'm going to ask you again because okay. I think it's important um, for people to understand how important a village is. So how important do you think the village is for your, your nephew, um, you know, that you all build and, you know, keep that support? Is that a clear question? It is. I Principal Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very, very clear. The village is extremely important. And sometimes the village can be a little overwhelming where the village starts to fight with each other because they want to love and love on the kids so yes. much. And so we have to create a balance there. But Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So you definitely want to make sure that the village understands our common goal. Mm-hmm. The village understands communication, understanding, because whereas I might be doing for the boy, that's what I call him, the boy. What I might be doing for the boy today the other village members, what are you doing as well? And I don't want to collide because right, at the end right, of the right. day, we're all just trying to love. Mm-hmm. We're all just right. trying to pour into them, and we don't want him to be lost to society. That's right. And so it has to be important that the village can communicate no matter what. Okay. Communication is key. And then sometimes, you know, we got to accept communication hurts. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, caller. Welcome to Mommy Talk. Hey, how you girls doing today? Good. Hey. How are you? Oh, should I say ladies? Ladies <laughs> and a gentleman. 
Thank you. Um, in the studio, yeah. we have a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, we have Orlando Bogans yes. in the house. Yes. He's an educator, father, okay, and right now he's current. I'm good, role. sir. I'm good. <laughs> Is it principal? Yes, okay. you, you have a question? Um, I would just wanted to say is being a father, and the only thing I would, you really can't change nothing. You, it's like repetitious. Mm -hmm. and, and like he was saying, it's the communication. Yes. So it's like an everyday job. Yeah. You know, even once they get grown and go to college and they didn't left the home, you still a father <laughs> and hopefully you be a good father figure. So you, I wouldn't change anything. I would just take it day by day. How I've been doing is being a father. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you have a yeah. question for uh, Mr. Bogans? Yes, I would have a question. Is saying um, us as being black men, uh, we have a, a temper to like kind of cuss at our children. How you kind of you know get around that? When they get on your nerves, oh. your last nerve. <laughs> <laughs> you should see his face right now. <laughs> um, I can say when I have, when I have, and mm -hmm. being for uh, transparency right now, it's it's been to the point where I'm more upset at a situation, not at him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I help him to understand it's his action. Mm -hmm. or the situation mm -hmm. that he submitted himself to. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have a conversation about it, and then we have to have a conversation when I calm down. Because mm -hmm. I won't be able to hear anything <laughs> when I'm upset. Yes. I, and that's my personal right. okay. And I have to accept that. So I have to give some space so that we can both go think about it, mm -hmm. come back, mm -hmm. and let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. right. Because okay. when you're angry, you don't understand. So I, I really don't cuss a lot. I can count on two hands maybe the times that I have, and he's 22 now. It is okay. probably on one hand. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm talking from a mom fudge perspective here. Uh, nice. Nice, okay. nice, nice. Well, thank you, caller. Are you a champion at parenting? I'm a champion at parenting. Yes, thank you for calling. You. Uh, what about helping others or participating in community service organizations? Um, do you think that that's a good uh, skill to help? children maintain positive relationships or build them? Yeah, I think that's very important. It's always important to teach kids or children to help others, you know, because in a way of helping others, they're helping themselves. Okay, what about you, uh, Mr. Bogan, as far as uh, community service and um, participating in organizations? I think so. I think they need to learn how to give back because uh, someone gave back to all of us. Yes. And if we had not received that uh, reciprocity or things given to us, we may not be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, we, first of all, I want to thank you for coming. Yes, and I have we to do. mimic what Dr. Pert said, you guys. Uh, Bogan over here looking looking like a glass. <laughs> 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 like a tall glass of water, y'all. <laughs> so, wow. uh, so, Orlando, uh, do you have any final words for our listeners? Uh, I just want to say to all parents and who's ever listening, if you have children, uh, and let me stop and say thank you to you all for this opportunity of inviting me in. I hope it's not the last time. I really enjoyed this opportunity. No, it's not the last time. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> coming not. Coming on <laughs> in with you all. Um, but to the parents out here, having that relationship uh, with your children is so important because whatever happens, whatever goes on, you always want your child to have that open door policy to come and talk to you because I will want mine to come and talk to me no matter what and not be afraid regardless of what yesterday has been. My dad told me one time when I was having a little moment, no matter what it is, son, he grabbed me, looked me in my eyes and said, you can always come and talk to me. That gave me confirmation Absolutely. that he was in my corner no matter what. And so I think that's so important because of what we're dealing with today. Okay. So thank you all again for tuning in. So in building the village, we must equip our children with the skills necessary to even help others in the absence of adults. So tune in next week where we will talk about sibling rivalry.